Come on, boys. I don't hear those singing. Do you want to sit or stand? I'm going to sit down for All a right, while. All right, and then I will follow. And we're going to open it up for whatever you have to ask. I'll... If I don't know the answer, I'll just make it up. <laughs> well, I would like to start. Go ahead. You just do it. okay. So you've probably answered every question about this movie that you could ever answer, probably a thousand times. Um, so I just want you to start with your favorite story, the the story you love to tell oh. about this movie. Well, my favorite story about the movie is real long, but I'll cut it as short as I can. It's it's leading up to the movie. I was a fireman in Dallas, Texas for 14 years. Got a call at the fire station one day. I had done a picture three months before Blazing Saddles called Paper Moon, which was a great, great picture. And I had a great, great part in it. I was like seven votes given an Academy Award nomination. Never thought I'd do anything else. Uh, but I got a call at the fire station uh, three months later. This guy said, Hi, my name is Bell Brooks. I'm a writer, director, producer, actor, and I'm getting ready to do a big picture, and I want you to be one of my stars. And I said, Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Boom. I just I hung up the phone. <laughs> I knew it was another fireman giving me a bad time like they have been doing for three months. And the long and short of it was uh, I kept telling him no. Finally, he convinced me to go out and see him, so I did. First time I told him no, second time I told him no. Uh, then uh, Richard Pryor called me and convinced me I'd better come back again because they needed to see me. I went back, <clears throat> excuse me, we got together on a deal. Uh, Mel said, how much money do you want for this? And I said, well, I'm, this is early 1973. I said, well, at the fire department, I make $12,000 a year. I you know that impressed him, you know. <laughs> I said, I can't quit the fire department for any less than what I'm making a whole year. And he said, well, we're giving you three weeks. That's $4,000 a week. That's good. Just like that. I left some money on the table. Folks. <laughs> but that's really my favorite story. But, but uh, when you get deep into it, I've got so many stories of, of people who were so good to me, like Madeline Kahn and, of course, Mel and, and Gene. They, uh, uh, oh, they were just all so good to me, everybody. Um, they knew that I was brand new, and they uh, gave me a lot of confidence. They, they all knew that I could do what they, what Mel wanted me to do, but they were all really in my corner. I like that you played hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do you want to open it up? I know y'all Y'all had an entire movie to think of awesome questions. Oh wait, an entire lifetime. Oh, is this the Virgin? Yeah. Yes, yeah. give it to us. What's your name? Steven. Hi, Steven. Hi, Steven. Okay, pal, I want to know time? what you think. Yeah. How long did it take to Film the scene where you are all farting in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you want to know a little bit more about farting today than you need to know. Uh, it took about probably, I know it was more than a day because there's so many people in the, in the scene. When you do a scene, you do a master, and that encompasses the whole big scene, whole big, all the people. But then you've got to go do a, uh, a close-up on a lot of the people, and that's what takes the time. It was probably a little bit more than a day. And, of course, after, we were all doing our, our very best, you know? <laughs> but, you know, after you, after you fired two or three shots, <laughs> you've got to say, bring on the, the sound man. <laughs> Speaking of the sound man, what was the foley used for that? Do you know? What was what? What was the sound used for that? I was trying to like, is that bamboo? Well. Did they get a stunt? I don't know where they came up with all <laughs> those sounds, but uh, I'm sure that they did it uh, genuinely. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, 
Stephen, what do you think of the movie as your first time? I thought it was great. <laughs> awesome, you guys. You know what? I think it was great too. <laughs> it was. It changed my life like that. Uh, and for for good. I mean, it, it really opened up things that I had never, ever even thought about. I was an actor before I even thought I was an actor. Golly. Uh, it was uh, a life-changing event. Mel, uh, thank you, Mel. I talked to Mel, you know, every three or four weeks. And, and if you call him, you call him Monday through Friday from uh, six uh, from nine o'clock to six o'clock, he's in the office. I don't know what he's doing. But he's in the office. It's dedication. What the? Yeah. You have uh, the best teeth I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you never ask an actor that. Well, let's just ask if they're mine. <laughs> yes, they are mine. I paid a lot of money. For money. <laughs> How about yours? <laughs> Boy, they get Whoa, we got two up top. Here, let's do the one in the middle. All right, I'll, I don't know if that's me, but. It um, is you. All right, other than Blazing Saddles, what's your favorite Mel Brooks movie? Uh, Young Frankenstein, because I was right there watching him and watching Mel and Gene write the thing. When they didn't have, well, at lunch every day, they would go off and, and uh, have lunch together, you know, on the set, but they'd be writing down things that, uh, uh, scenes and uh, words, sentences, that they wanted to have done in that picture. And, uh, and I love, I, I really, did not know who Mel Brooks was. Clearly, you turned him, him down like I five times. Him, yeah, until he called me to the fire station, I had no idea who he was. But after we did Blazing Saddles, you know, it just, I, I have always felt like uh, I had a real relationship with him. And the first thing out of the box after Blazing Saddles was Young Frankenstein, or Young Frankenstein. <laughs> All right, there was a question up there. Was there any particular scene, uh, or actor for that matter, that took just an inordinate number of shots to, to get right? Oh, well I'll tell you, the first couple of days we shot, every scene took longer and more scenes, more takes, than it should have, because we were all laughing. <laughs> and every, every shot would be broken up by somebody laughing. And finally on the third day, Mel came in and said, okay, everybody, we're gonna let you laugh. The first two shots, the first two takes of each scene. Then after that, there's no laughing, you know. <laughs> um, he was on a three million dollar budget, and he did not want to come in over budget, and he didn't. And that, and I think that uh, you know, if we'd have gone on for another ten days laughing like we were all doing, we'd have had to come in way over budget. So many questions up top. Yeah. Ooh, what hold was on like to it. To with Slim Pickens? Did he teach you anything? <laughs> Slim Pickens taught me everything. <laughs> Slim Pickens became my very best friend. When I did the, when we were doing the the, the picture, uh, Alex Karras and I lived together. But Slim became my very best friend. Uh, after. I had a couple of agents the first four or five years, then I went with Slim's agent. Uh, but from the very start, he and Maggie lived out in Thousand Oaks, California, which is 30 miles out of downtown Los Angeles. And about two or three years later, they moved up to Columbia, California on the old 49er Highway. So my wife and I used to go up there and visit him and Maggie every spring, because it's right up, it's on in the foothills of, the, of Yosemite. Uh, he was such a wonderful guy and he always said 
you don't have to be a great actor to do what I'm doing. <laughs> and he said, you just got to watch me and try to do a little bit like what I do and you'll be just fine. <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> I would, I would say that I'm, I'm not a, um, I'm a journeyman. Um, I don't specialize in anything. And if you, of course, if you wanted me to do Shakespeare, I'm sure that I can do that. <laughs> but I followed in uh, Slim's footsteps, yeah. Nice. How did Alex Karras get into it? Did he want to be an actor or did somebody pull him in? Did who want to be an actor? Alex Karras? Oh, Alex had only done one picture before uh, Blazy Saddles. About a year before he did a picture, you probably know, called uh, Paper Lion. And it was about the Detroit Lions, and he was, you know, uh, the, the greatest guard, the only guard at that time. Uh, and he played for the Detroit Lions, and he found out he had a, a real knack for for being in front of the camera. Uh, and if you remember way back there, he did two years on Monday Night Football. Uh, and boy, he thought he had struck gold because they were paying him. Back then, they were only doing 14 games a season, but he made $5,000 a, a, a football game, and he thought he was really <laughs> killing them. <you> know? <laughs> Right so the uh, the subject matter was very at the time was very groundbreaking and controversial. Was there an awareness and a discussion of that on set while you were filming it? Because it was a comedy, so kind of balancing those two subject the subject matter with the the comedy. <laughs> this guy likes fart jokes. <laughs> uh, I've never looked at it from that point of view. <laughs> which would be a great point of view, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> uh, let, let's go to, uh, yeah, yeah, say yes, say I said yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Richard Pryor was one of the writers. What? Richard Pryor was one of the writers. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> pretty, pretty aware, I think. Very much, yeah. I was there. <laughs> What about the writers? Why did it, he's asking if Richard uh, Pryor was one of the writers? Why he didn't oh, star in it? Oh boy, Richard, you know, y'all probably know some of you do that. Uh, Richard was uh, Mel's first choice for Black Bart. Uh, he was everybody's choice for for the role, except the two big honchos at Warner Brothers. They didn't want to have anything to do with him. He had not made a picture before. He had never done any television, but he was a, uh, a noted uh, stand-up comedian who showed up sometime and didn't show up sometime, <laughs> and they didn't want to touch him. Uh, it would have been a completely different movie with him playing the lead role, and I'd like to see it, but golly, would it have been as good as what it was? I don't, uh, who knows? We'll never know. Was he ever um, on set? I'm sorry? Was he ever on set? He came on set uh, for about 10 days. And a lot of times, uh, lead actors and actresses in movies don't pan out. And they find out about the, the producers and the director and the writers find these things out uh, in the first few days, five or six days, and and they 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 will replace the lead actors sometime. Uh, Richard stayed on the set for a couple of weeks, and then he could see after that that it wasn't going to happen. So I didn't see him again until the uh, we did the world premiere. Richard was a one of my great. One of my great friends. He, uh, after I had told Mel no the first time after I went out there, I went back and told him no again. Then Richard called me 
And I, I was at home and this guy, I, the guy says, I said, hello. And he said, hey man, this is Richard. I said, Richard who? He said, Richard Pry, man. And when I tell you that, I could, I got goosebumps running all over me now. And, and I've told this story thousands of times, but it always really hits me because it's, if Richard had to call me, he wouldn't, I'd be a retired fireman. I'd be living, I'd be living down in East Texas and I'd have two cows. <laughs> but, uh, gosh, uh, when Richard called me on that, after I told him no twice, he said, uh, listen, we really do want you to do this part. So Richard, so uh, Mel and I set up last night, rewrote your whole part. Uh, before that, there was really nothing in the picture for me. I didn't. I just told him no. But he said, you're gonna open the picture and you're gonna tell how crazy this thing is going. We're not, you're not gonna tell where it's going, but it's gonna be a real wild ride, as he put it to me. And boy, was he right, golly. Uh, Y'all haven't asked me, but the, the, my favorite scene in the whole picture is the very, in the scene, the last scene that you see. I love it when uh, the two of them are, on, are riding down to the, the uh, limousine to get in the car. They shake hands uh, and they get in the limousine and they go up the hill, dusty hill, and the and Blazing Saddles is playing. La, da, 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 da. Oh, it's great. That's my favorite scene of the picture because it really shows uh, what the movie is, is all about. And the movie is all about accepting one another as we are. And that's what they were showing us right there at the end. The next time you see Blazing Saddles, be sure to watch very closely that scene right there. Now, is there, there's one question that nobody ever asks me. Do you have any idea what that is? And I, I tell them, the outfit. No? <laughs> now, this is not the outfit. <laughs> Back then, I didn't, I was brand new. I didn't know that uh, when this, the star of a picture, when they finish the picture, they can take their wardrobe with them. I didn't know that. It's called stealing. <laughs> but everybody does it. I wasn't smart enough to know that. I wish I had the original outfit. Oh, man. Yeah, definitely. I'm a costumer yes. in the film industry. And uh, when y'all take your clothes, we hate it. <laughs> Did I do plays? No. I've done. Oh, I've done a lot of, I've done a lot of TV. I mean, have, I've you done, done, have you done a lot of wardrobe stealing? A lot of what? Wardrobe stealing? Oh. Stealing the wardrobe? Oh, gosh, man, I got a closet. <laughs> Two, three, four. Are you kidding me? I think you have a closet. I learned how to really take advantage of that. Yeah. Yes, sir. The camp town ladies. Uh, come on, boys. Why are you lollygagging around here with them picks and them shovels? You think it was 120 degrees. It can't be more than 114. Huh? <laughs> Doc, that guy right there, Dave, think we have on the job. Now, come on, boys. I don't hear no singing. When you was slaves, you sang like birds. Come on, how about a good old Afro-American woman? <laughs> Swing low, sweet chariot. You don't know that, huh? Well, what about the Camp Town ladies? Oh, you know. The Camp Town ladies sing this song. 
do not, do not. Kept the racetrack by the wall, all the do not day. Why had to run all night? Why had to run all day? I bet my money on the bobtail chase. Somebody bet on the bay. <laughs> what, what is the question no one ever asks you? Uh, did we just skip oh, right over? No one, yes, back to that. <laughs> when we did, when Mel and I finally got together with Bill, he said, I'm going to give you paid ads. You do not know what paid, ad is, paid ads are. But paid ads, when there's any uh, advertisement of the movie that has the stars, the writers, the director, and uh, producers, when, when those ads run in the paper or anywhere, your name is on there, that's paid ads. And he said, I'll give you paid ads. I said, oh good, thank you. But it also means that you are on the front credits, uh, in, and he had told me you'll be in sixth position. Okay. Well, the next time you look at the picture, and you pro probably some of you in here noticed, first time I saw the movie in a screening, I wasn't on the front credits. I was not on the end credits. I was nowhere. I called after the second one. I called Bell. I said, Bell, what happened? I'm not in the credits. He said, Oh yeah, you're right there next to uh, David Huddleston. I said, Well, no, I'm not. He, I'll call you back in a minute. So he called back and said, you're not on the credits. <laughs> no kidding. Um, he said, I'll get it fixed. Well, this was two months before the uh, it was released, you know, for, uh, nationwide. And he couldn't get it fixed. It was going to cost a fortune to get me on the front credits right where I should have been. Um, and, but on the end credits, I'm right below Mel today. Right, I'm about the fifth position, uh, which is not like being on the front credits. <laughs> when you're on the front credits, and I mean your name is right there with one other person, you know, uh, that translate uh, translates in our business to a lot of money. Uh, but uh, I was young and didn't want to rock the boat, and could have sued him, but God. I can't do that. Mel Brooks found me. You know, he got my life started. Uh, so I couldn't do that. But uh, it'll always, that's the one thing that I feel bad about. But Mel did not do that on purpose. It, he just forgot that your billing contract is different from your, your money contract. And he just forgot to tell him, hey, he's got paid ads. Boy, I hate it. <laughs>